Uh, welcome uh, my fellow modelers. I uh, want to give you the uh, final update of uh, my Revel Dawn of Time uh, trike of uh, Triceratops I've been working on. And uh, he's all painted up and uh, ready to go. So <clears throat> just to let you know too, he did come with a uh, small little diorama which I uh, painted up as well so here he is in all his glory and uh, I'll kind of give you a little 360 degree tour of the uh, finished product so uh, we're just gonna go ahead and rotate them around and uh, you can see the uh, the work that I did uh, to get him to this point now, it's probably a little bit off focus just the uh, turning of the lazy Susan here but uh, there you have it all right I just like to kind of go over some uh, steps with you as far as uh, uh, where I got to this point for the uh, finished product um, I guess if you last recall on the uh, previous video and uh, also some of the comments I had uh, from my past video uh, some of my subscribers were asking whether or not uh, I was going to uh, uh, keep the seams in place or or uh, actually kind of hide them and uh, um, as well as you know what kind of highlights as far as the colors are concerned for uh, for my triceratops well, <clears throat> to answer one of the questions is, is I decided to uh, uh, go ahead and hide the seams for uh, for this Triceratops by using some epoxy putty. Um, and uh, what I ended up doing was basically uh, taking off all the limbs of, uh, of them and uh, applying some of the uh, red uh, testers glue uh, and then reinserting the legs and locking them in place permanently in a fixed position but also making sure that he's in a balanced fixed position because of the weight of his head here um, I did the same thing with the uh, tail uh, I decided on what composition I want the tail in since that rotates 360 and uh, put that in a fixed position as well so uh, like I said all this has been uh, or I should say all the seams have been um, hidden by the epoxy uh, sculpting putty uh, that I used and uh, and I kind of try to blend it in with the uh, rest of the uh, the kit itself to make sure that it looked as seamless as possible uh, and I think it looked came out really well um, after I did the legs I went ahead and, and uh, inserted the uh, the head it took me a while because the uh, the back side of the head is had a clothespin effect on it and I had to kind of line it up with the uh, uh, kind of sprue that was holding the two half parts of his body together so that took a little maneuvering but I got to click in place but uh, when I did that it basically uh, I'll put it this way for right now um, it left a nice big gap between the head and the body or the neck of the body itself so once again I applied the uh, epoxy putty and formed it and actually made ridges underneath this frill on the back side to make it look like some folding skin um, just so that it looked like I said once again as seamless as possible so when everything was tight and ready to go um, it was basically ready for paint um, so what I end up doing once uh, you know of course I had the primer on it already I went ahead and put a uh, base coat of uh, Krylon uh, gloss paint and it was the color of pewter gray 
So I did the whole thing. I actually, you know, spray canned, but it was a Krylon product. And I sprayed the whole entire uh, figure down with, with that uh, particular item. Um, and of course I let it sit uh, for a couple of nights uh, just to cure. Um, once that was done, then it was basically uh, uh, putting the layers down of uh, different colored paints. Now believe it or not, I actually used a total of 14 different colors on this guy. Um, you know, technically it was 13, but the 14th color I used, I combined actually uh, some red and some white to uh, get some pink out of it because I wanted to paint the underside of his uh, belly uh, undercarriage, so to speak, uh, uh, a little bit of some of that off off pink. Um, so <clears throat> basically, what I did uh, was first of all, you know, an artist an artist paint scheme type of kind of thing is uh, you always want to kind of go with your dark colors uh, and then come out to the light so uh, what I end up doing once the uh, the base coat of the gloss pewter color was put down I went ahead and uh, I started with uh, basically uh, we'll kind of set this right here for you or kind of put this there this is the uh, <clears throat> ocean gray XF82 to flat paint, but it's made by Tamiya, and uh, consequently, this whole painting scheme was all done with an airbrush. Uh, actually, it was my Iwata Eclipse airbrush uh, do action because I wanted to get some details in there and have control of the paint flow. Uh, so I started off with the Ocean Gray 2 uh, XF82, and uh, once I Highlighted all the kind of shadows for that. I came back with some uh, actually black X1 uh, to highlight that effect as well. So always starting off with the dark colors first, and kind of basically uh, sprayed them all down where I think the shadows were going to be in relation to the to where the light was going to be. So those were my first two colors. Once I uh, took care of that I went ahead and uh, I was you know at that point it was kind of like that bluish gray skin to him and I said well you know uh, dinosaurs lizard lizards green um, so this is like I said my first time painting a dinosaur so as far as the color scheme was concerned uh, I was kind of hesitant at first about using the green but once I got started with it, I said, "Well, why not? Let's let's put some green in him for some highlights." Um, so basically, what I end up doing, once again, you'll have to think of that dark colors to light colors to bring it forward. I went with uh, another Tamiya. Uh, this one's green X X dash five, and I started laying down with my airbrush. Um, all these nice little <clears throat> highlights throughout his whole body because it's fairly nicely detailed so uh, I was basically just kind of you know uh, airbrushing certain areas uh, around his whole body with a dark green and uh, once I was satisfied with that uh, I came back with a lighter green this is actually called Park Green X-28 and I started highlighting over the dark green uh, but I didn't want to erase the uh, background colors as far as the black and the uh, you know the gray ocean gray and the uh, the gloss. So I didn't want to color completely. I still want some of that to show through. So it's just a matter of just detailing certain areas, you know, casting shadows and stuff like that with the uh, two green colors to kind of bring that out to focus. So that was my my two other colors there. Once I was satisfied with that, um, I from that point I went to uh, where I wanted to kind of give them a little bit of uh, some purple and some pink colors. Um, so what I ended up doing was uh, I had two to me uh, colors. One was a, a purple, and of course the X stands for a gloss paint. 
so X-16 for the purple. Uh, but it was a little too dark, so I, I went ahead and mixed uh, some white. That's X-2 white. I mixed the two together to kind of bring the dark color, the purple, you know, up a little bit, so it's a little bit lighter color. Uh, and on that particular uh, uh, way of doing things was to airbrush. These are called like rosettes on top, these little bumps uh, from what the scientists say. And I actually kind of highlighted some purple all around the underside of the rosettes for shadow. Um, and I, hopefully the camera kind of picks a little bit of that up. I'll kind of rotate a little bit for you here. And I did the top as well as you know some areas around his legs and stuff that I really highlight with the rosette feature on there. Um, as well as, uh, let me see if I can bring this light up a little bit. I know it's kind of hard here. But <clears throat> besides doing the top of his rosettes, I actually, let me kind of turn him over. Hopefully the camera can pick up on this. But um, it's kind of hard with the light in here. But uh, I actually uh, blended the uh, some purple on his underside as well. Now the underside is actually still part of that uh, pewter gray gloss stuff and I did the uh, you know purple to kind of blend in his underside skin a little bit all the way through you know from head to, to uh, the tail so that's kind of like what that looks like there All right. and of course later on I, I mixed up the red and the white uh, to uh, make some pink and I overlay some pink overtones as well uh, on the underside so there you go let me see I'm put them back right here for you okay all right so you know speaking of the pink I kind of went back after I mixed the red and the white and I highlighted the uh, the rosettes now with the earbrush uh, you know as you can see here give it kind of a pinkish color as well as you can see part of it here on his underbelly just to kind of blend everything in all right so that was my <coughs> second well uh, third and fourth uh step in the layering of the paints using of course you know the uh you know the red and the white for the pink and then lighting lighting up the purple and uh once i was satisfied again with that then uh it was time for the uh, for the horns. Uh, now, initially, like I said, the horns were covered also with the gloss pewter gray from Krylon. Um, but then I, what I did is uh, I mixed some uh, white again with some dark brown. In this case, I I used the uh, uh, Tamiya red brown xf-664 it's another flat paint uh, I mixed it with some of the gloss white paint uh, and then I also added a little bit of some yellow in this case it was the uh, lemon yellow x-8 uh, mixed it all up together to uh, we got a kind of a bone color effect and I went ahead and uh, airbrushed that on his two brow horns as well as the horn coming out from above his snout and of course the parrot-like beak um, in front of his uh, snout uh, as well as the underside of his jaw once that was done um, and dried I went back and I actually took some uh, NATO black Tamiya XF69 and I started highlighting uh, is is uh his brow area and the tips uh on both his horns and his uh the horn coming out of his snout again just to give it some highlights and details and uh once that was done let that dry for a little bit then i came back again with some straight red brown and actually kind of highlighted the, you know the tops and around his horns and just kind of lightly blended it in with the airbrush you know, as well as his parrot-shaped uh, beak and everything. So those are basically the uh, colors I used uh, to uh, get this look on his horns and his uh, his uh, beak. And then once that was done, 
uh, I went ahead and uh, you know I, I took care of his uh, his feet too, his claws uh, with just the standard bone color. So I, I uh, airbrushed all that in, as you can see. And uh, then once all that was done, then it was time to uh, take care of the eyes. Now, if you recall uh, in my previous video uh, or pictures, I actually had a coating of some Microsol liquid mask on there, so it looked like a blue tint. Uh, once I got done with all the, the major painting for the rest of his body, I went back with a toothpick, toothpick and I actually peeled off the uh, liquid mask for his eyes, which left the uh, pewter gray color so then what I ended up doing was actually uh, going back to my uh, this is the lemon yellow X-8 and I actually uh, painted his whole entire eye um, see if you can see that his whole entire eye yellow and then I went back with uh, uh, two other two to three other colors uh, as far as I already had that pink made up for his rosette, so I went back and I, I took a toothpick and I dabbed a little pink on the inside uh, corner of his eye uh, just to kind of give it that human characteristic. You know, where us humans, have, we have like the little pink uh, around the inside of our eye by our nose. So uh, I did that with the pink and then I came back with some royal blue. I don't know if I have this here or not, but. I actually used royal blue with a toothpick and uh, I actually dabbed it right here where, where the corona or the iris is at and uh, once that was dried I went back and with another toothpick and I actually used some uh, sky blue X-14 Tamiya there and uh, I actually dabbed that in the center of the royal blue and once that was dry, I went back with the uh, X-2 white, the tooth back and with a toothpick, and I just uh, put a little dab on there to give that little highlight for reflection. And, uh, uh, and then uh, the last color I put on there was the uh, red X-7 Tamiya. Uh, because if uh, actually on the eyeball part of it there was actually some striations where there was like some veins coming across so I actually took a toothpick and I uh, scribed uh, some red in there um, and of course then once that was all done and I was satisfied with the eyes uh, then it was time to as far as the the figure itself uh, I got some Krylon um, matte uh, finish in a spray can. Uh, it's got the UV resistant on it feature on there. So I uh, shook it all up and I sp sprayed the entire uh, figure down with two to three layers, you know, giving it time to uh, dry in between. So, you know, just to, so as I was uh, saying that uh, I sprayed the overall uh, build uh, with the Triceratops with the uh, Krylon uh, matte finish and I laid about two or three uh, layers in between um, you know for drying time purposes as well and after I got done with that uh, I went ahead and put some future on his eyes on both sides uh, to really kind of gloss it up and uh, make it kind of pop out a little bit so uh, <clears throat> that was my paint setup as far as uh, going through the stages from beginning to end. Uh, now this thing does come with uh, a little diorama. I'll move this off to the side here. And this basically comes with two half pieces. This isn't actually glue. It's a, actually it's a little leaf that I just airbrushed on there. Um, <clears throat> But uh, as you can tell, it was two pieces. Um, as you can tell, it's almost like a step down. Uh, it does snap together, as well as this uh, kind of boulder structure. Uh, these are actually uh, two separate pieces. Uh, and of course, they just kind of snap in place. There's two little holes. And you just kind of fit it in there, snap in place, and it's pretty solid. 
and there's two little uh, tabs underneath the, the big main one and uh, that gets snapped into the main uh, platform of the uh, diorama but uh, <clears throat> I basically just uh, did a quick little paint up on this and uh, you know kind of dark brown with some little bits of uh, highlights of uh, green to kind of simulate some of the vegetation on there um, I mean if you look closely I don't know if this can pick it up or anything but it almost looks like fossilized uh, ferns in the uh, diorama part itself but uh, just something simple and it's just big enough for him to uh, uh, sit on for display purposes but uh, that's it uh, he is complete and uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, uh, Dawn of Time series that I've been videotaping and uh, I do appreciate uh, you watching and uh, subscribing and uh, until next time, uh, have a good day. Catch you later. Bye.